and welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, I'd like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my stories for wonderful children. There's a little girl named Winella, and she lives in a very special house full of many quiet rooms. The most special room of all is Winella's room, because everything in it is pink and blue. Everything except for one thing is the pink and blue. The ceiling fan. That's right. What, what color is that? Winella's house is very, very quiet because what? the misconductor has summoned the silence. Silence? The silence and quieted all the sounds in the world and has caused the fairies that are responsible for all the sounds in the world but to have you to take run go. away. Go. So far, Winella has worked and has freed Law and Doe from the silence. Law has helped Winella be able to sing short little songs so that she can communicate. And now that Doe is back in the world, she's able to use her powers to start restoring the ability of animals to sing. Well, Winella, by the time Winella got home from helping Doe, it was starting to get dark and she had to go to bed for the night. She knew that she would have to get up bright and early the next morning in order to get Joey and to go on the Cat's Paw Highway to the Brook of Dreams to free Ray. Ray? She went to sleep. Yes, Ray is the next fairy. She went to sleep that night, and she had slept for most of the night when she woke up suddenly. And at first she thought that maybe it was morning, but she, when she opened her eyes, she saw that it was still dark outside, and she wondered what had woken her. And then she heard it, and it was a surprise to her, because she hadn't heard much of anything in a day now. The sound was this. When Ella looked down to the foot of her bed, and there, lying across the foot of her bed, was the biggest, blackest cat she knew. It was Theodore, and when Ella was surprised that she could hear him purring, she said, Theodore, how can I hear you, and why are you here? And Theodore said, You have freed Doe. And Doe's powers are in charge of all animals. Singing and a, a purr is a cat way of singing. As to your question, young Winella, I'm here with a message from Flibberty Gibbet. He congratulates you on freeing two of the music fairies. He wants you to know But he has discovered that the misconductor knows about your attempt to free the fairies. He says to tell you that the misconductor is sending the rests to try to stop you. And when I was saying, rests, what are rests? I don't know. Theodore replied, Flippity Gibbet didn't tell me. He just said to warn you to be careful. Now go back to sleep, young Manella. You have a big day ahead of you tomorrow. And with 
that she laid back and closed her eyes, and it seemed like she had only closed them for a moment, and when she opened them again, Theodore was gone, and sunlight was streaming in her window. She quickly got up and stretched, and ran downstairs, had breakfast, and then ran back upstairs to the roof. She, the door to the roof burst open and she saw Joey with his head still under his wing asleep in his nest. She sang, Joey, 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 I need your help. Wake up, Joey. Joey took his head out from underneath his wing, blinked his eyes, and looked at her and sang back to her. He sang, Vanilla, what's the matter? And when Alice sang back, you can sing, that's wonderful. Doe must be restoring all the animal's ability to sing. And Joey sang, but what has happened, I don't understand. And when Ella replied, she sang, the silence is here. It has stopped the music fairies from bringing sound and music into the world. I must go, I must go. I must go and rescue Ray, but it is far away. Will you help? And Joey just shook his head yes. Vanella got onto his back, and he glided down off the roof into the backyard and onto the Cat's Paw Highway. Together they stood on the wall and sang, Cat's Paw Highway, Cat's Paw Highway, take us where we want to go. And they went very fast. When they turned around, they could see that they were indeed in trouble again. Because when they looked at the trees and the bushes, they could see that right next to them, there was a tree that was growing xylophones. And there was a rather large bush near that that appeared to be growing drums. But as they looked, they saw across the clearing on this sort of misty day, shadows creep into the clearing. There were three shadows, and it was strange because although they could see the shadows, they could not see what cast the shadows. The shadows looked like great cats, and they could see in the shadows that they had dark teeth and dark claws. Manella pointed, and Joey nodded, and Manella said, those must be the rests that Flippity-Jibbit warned us about. They must be here to stop us from rescuing Ray. Joey sang, quickly, Winella, quickly, get onto my back, let us fly away, fly away, fly away. And she started to get onto his back, and the rests must have realized, because instead of just slinking across the clearing, they began to run across the clearing towards them. Joey leapt off the wall and flapped his great wings, took off into the air, into the direction where when Winella looked at the map on her hand, she could see where the Brook of Dreams was. She pointed to him which way to go, and he nodded and began to fly off in that direction. Winella looked back behind her, and she could see the shadows of the great cats. They were standing on the wall. As she watched, the shadows began to shimmer and change and grow. And as she watched, they assumed the shape of great birds with great sharp beaks and long talons. Winella sang, hurry, Joey, hurry. The rests, the rests are after us. The great shadow birds took flight after them. They flew quickly, but not quickly enough to catch Joey, at least not very soon. But the shadows were tireless. They chased them through the sky, over hills and over valleys, through meadows and over mountains. Joey looked back and sang, Catch me if you can, catch me if you can. I'm the fastest bird in the land, catch me if you can. And he beat his great wings. The chase went on through the afternoon, and slowly, slowly, the rests began to draw closer. When Alice sang, Joey, Joey, they're catching us, Joey. And Joey looked back, and he narrowed his bird eyes and said, There's not a bird alive that can outfly me, nor a rest, nor a rest, nor a rest. And with that, he folded his wings 
And Ponella held on tight and he flew towards the ground. The shadows chased them down towards the ground. Joey snapped his wings open just as they seemed like they were about to hit the ground and flew through trees flying by on the left side of them and the right side of them. He banked around a sharp turn and straight ahead of them there was a hill. He beat his wings and flew up over the top, but the shadows were right behind them. Ponella looked back and said, Joey, the rest, they are still behind us. Joey looked ahead, and he could see that there was a long, narrow canyon ahead. He dove down into it. It was so narrow that his wingtips were scraping along either side, and it seemed to get narrower and narrower. Winella held on to him tightly as she could, and she could see that ahead of them there was a solid wall. She said, Joey, look out, look out, look out, look out! And then she felt it flap his wings and rise up above the very edge of the wall and it seemed like his feathers on his belly were going to scrape off in the edge of that wall and she looked back and the rests, the rests could not quite make it. Two of them went poof, poof, right into the wall and just disappeared. The third one managed to just make it back up over and now it was right on top of them and Manella said, we must try something else. We must try something else. And then she looked down. She saw that she had the Omni Harp in her hand. And she thought, what else do I know? What other songs do I know? I need a song, a song about speed. And then she thought of the song that her daddy would sing to her. So she played the notes on the Omni Harp and she looked back straight at the rest and she sang at it with all her might. She sang, I once had a bird named Joey, all on account of his feathery wings. He weren't much for hard bone labor, but he could outfly all other things. And as she sang at it, the shadow of the rest just sort of shimmered and grew faint and disappeared. And Joey just laughed and went down and said, We made it, we made it, we made it, we made it, we made it. And up ahead, they could see the silver outline of the stream in the woods. And Joey descended toward it, toward the brook of dreams. And as they descended to land, Winella could see, could see that in the middle of the Brook of Dreams, there was an area where the water wasn't moving. It wasn't ice, but it wasn't moving at all. And there, encased in the water, stuck except for just the tip of her nose sticking out, there was a fairy. The fairy was dressed all in blue, and her blue was sort of a shimmering, beautiful color. And as they watched, the blue sort of shimmered to purple and violet and back to blue and then to green. The dress sort of changed colors as they watched. The fairy had in her hand an instrument, but it was a strange sort of instrument. It looked sort of like a drum, but it had all sorts of knots and, and knobs on it. When Ella got off Joey's back and she looked at the Omni Harp and she plucked the string for and as the sound reverberated, the water around the fairy began to shimmer and flow, just like normal water, and the fairy went <laughs> And she stuck her head up above the water and stretched her hands up, and Winella caught her hands and pulled her up out of the water, and the fairy sang, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! And Winella sang, she sang, I'm Winella, I'm here to help you. And Ray sang, whoop <laughs> doop 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 doo -de -doo. I'm Ray, I'm the fairy of sounds that are loud and fast, sounds that are fun and sounds that are music. And this is such a happy day. And she <laughs> said, but wait. But wait, what's that sound I hear? And they heard a sound. It was, it was the most terrible, screechy, clangy, icky, sort of bangy, not fun at all. Fingernails on a chalkboard, forks across a plate sound. And when Ella sang, what is that? And Ray sang, it's, 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 it
She sang quickly, you must hide in the brook of dreams, I will fly away. And so Winella and Joey jumped into the brook of dreams. Now the brook of dreams is not like a regular brook. It's a brook that when you jump into it, it gives you dreams. Some of the dreams are important. Some of the dreams are strange. But everyone dreams. So Anella and Joey jumped deep into the brook of dreams and were carried along on a dream away from the misconductor. And tomorrow night, I will tell you what they dreamed what? and how they came to find and rescue me. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. Today's story was created and edited by me, Dan Wendelin. Commentary was supplied by my children. Intro and outro music composed by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoyed the story, please tell someone about it or leave a review on iTunes. If you'd like to, you can contact us by email at storiesforwonderfulchildren at gmail.com. I'll see you next time.